Hello everyone, welcome back to our discussion on phase equilibrium. Here in this part, we will see two component systems, the features of two component systems, examples and different kinds of two component systems and applications. So coming to two component system, as it indicates, the number of components will be two, that is it's a binary mixture of two independent components. And an example would be something like this, a mixture of oil and water will form a system of two components, first one is oil and the other is water. And here in this example, you can say there are two phases also, oil form a separate phase from the water phase. Anyway, if you imagine, if you apply the phase rule that is F is C minus 3 plus 2 as we have seen in our previous discussion, if you apply this phase rule onto a two component system, the maximum degrees of freedom will be 3. That is, you need at least temperature, pressure and the composition in terms of mole fraction or in terms of percentages, whatever it is. You need at least these three parameters to describe the system at any point. There will be three variables to describe. So in the phase diagram, you will have three variables to describe the system. That means you need to use all the three axes, x, y and z axis that will result in a three dimensional graph. As we have got a two dimensional surface in the plane of the paper, we cannot draw three dimensional graph or it is not easy to visualize a three dimensional graph on a two dimensional surface. So that is why we just restrict or we just limit or reduce the state that one of the variables is kept constant. If you have got, that is we define the maximum degrees of freedom to be 2. If you have got a solid liquid equilibrium, we know that for a solid liquid equilibrium, the parameter pressure is very least significant. Pressure changes can be ignored on this equilibrium. That, that means pressure is kept constant for this kind of systems. That the pressure is assumed to be constant for this kind of two component system. So that it is easy to represent the changes on a two dimensional graph. That's why. So the system will become a condensed system. The significance of pressure is neglected. Then the system will become a condensed system. So we can apply a reduced phase rule here. The actual, the real phase rule is C minus P plus 2 and this 2, those 2 parameters are actually temperature and pressure. Now for the reduced phase rule, assuming the system to be a condensed system, we take off the pressure out. So we have got C minus P plus 1 and that is the reduced phase rule. So for the two component system, we are going to apply the reduced phase rule further. So, the de degrees of freedom that we, that we need or the parameters that we need to describe the system would be temperature and composition now onwards. So, now let's see uh, two com different types of two component systems. Here, we have got simple eutectic systems. Simple eutectic systems are systems in which the two components are completely miscible in the liquid phase but completely immiscible in the solid phase. So when they are in liquid, they are completely miscible from a uniform system but when, when they are freezing to solid state, they form two separate phases. So they become immiscible. That is a simple eutectic system. And there are other systems like congruent melting system and incongruent or non-congruent melting system. These two, this congruent and incongruent melting systems involve the formation of a compound between the two phases. On the other hand, in the first case, that is a simple eutectic system, the two components do not react chemically to form a new component. But here, for a congruent and incongruent melting system, the two components at certain point react chemically to form a new compound. And the congruent melting system is in which the new compound formed between the two components A and B that melt at a given, at a sharp melting point maintaining the same composition as in the solid. That is the composition in the solid is maintained in the liquid or in the melt phase also. Whereas in the incongruent or non-congruent melting system is in which the compound, the compound formed between the two components have a different composition in the liquid phase and in the solid phase. 
So this is about congruent and incongruent melting systems. And now coming to solid solutions. Solid solutions are completely miscible in the liquid phase and completely miscible in the solid phase also like an alloy. So these are the four different types of two component systems mainly simple eutectic one there is no compound formation between A and B and congruent and non-congruent melting systems have compound formed between the two components A and B and for congruent melting system composition is preserved in the solid phase and in the liquid phase whereas incongruent melting system has got different compositions in the liquid phase when the solid is melting and solid solutions have two components which are miscible in liquid and solid phases. Now coming to simple eutectic system. As we have seen completely miscible in liquid phase and immiscible in solid phase. As we have seen the two components do not chemically react and a particular composition is processing the lowest melting point in that mixture that composition corresponds to the eutectic mixture and the respective temperatures are called the eutectic temperature and eutectic pressure and as we have assumed here the pressure is insignificant and coming to a model phase diagram for simple eutectic system we let's start with we have got two components a and b and at the origin of the graph we have got 100 percent ha that means we are starting with pure a and as you move along the x-axis, you decrease the amount of A but increase the amount of B. So, you have got at the end of this x-axis, you have got the pure B. That is, the, the amount of A is decreasing, decreasing and at a certain point, only pure B is present. So, this point A, this marks the melting point of pure A. And as you add more and more B, the second component you can observe that the melting point of A decreases along the curve AO because along AO more and more B is being added to the system. So on one side of this curve you have got solid A that is below the melting point you have got solid A and above the melting point you have got the melt in which liquid A and liquid B is present. So in total this is called a melt where both the components A and B are present. And there exists the equilibrium between the melt and the solid phase. So the two phases coexist here or those two phases are in equilibrium along the curve AO. And now if you apply the condensed phase rule or reduced phase rule on the system you can see that along the curve or on each point on the curve is described by at least two parameters either temp both temperature and the composition are to be mentioned that is the uh, phase degrees of freedom will be 2. Okay now beyond O if you further add the second component B you can observe the effect of B dominates and hence the melting point increases in this direction that is like OB and this point B marks the melting point of pure component B. And on one side of the curve OB you have got solid B that is this is the melting point of B. So obviously below that melting point you have got B solidifying and above that you have got the melt where A and B are present in the liquid state and this equilibrium exists along the curve OB. And the point O here is the point with the lowest melting point. The whole system, among the whole system, this point O corresponds to or this particular composition corresponds to the lowest melting point. And that point is called eutectic point and the temperature and corresponding composition is called eutectic composition and eutectic temperature. So this is how a general two component eutectic system look like. Now we move on to a specific example of lead silver system. Here we start with 100% lead that is pure lead and as we move along the x axis we are adding more and more silver. So at the end you have got pure silver. So let's start with this point. This point A that is 327 degrees marks the melting point of pure lead. And as we move along the curve AO, we can see that the melting point of lead decreases because silver is being added. The amount of silver increases along AO. And on one side you have got solid lead and on the other side of the curve you have got melt in which lead and silver are present in the liquid form. And if we further move on 
along OB at the point B this point marks the melting point of pure silver because here silver is only the only silver is present and this temperature 961 degrees centigrade corresponds to the melting point of pure silver and OB marks the melting point curve of silver and below this curve you have got solid silver and above the curve you have got melt in which lead and silver both are present in the liquid phase. So this is how the phase diagram of lead silver system looks and this point O marks the eutectic point with this characteristic temperature of 303 degrees centigrade. This is the lowest melting point possessed by the system at this particular composition of 2.6% silver that means the rest is lead. So this is how lead silver system look like. Now let's imagine one thing. I start with this point X. So, I have got a lead silver system, a melt of lead and silver together at this particular composition. And if I cool it down, if I change the temperature down, if I cool it down without changing the composition, just this melt is being cooled down, then I will reach this curve xy and at this particular point y, I am touching the curve ao. At the point y, I am touching the curve ao. That means, at the point Y, from the melt, lead does start to solidify because the Y marks the melting point or freezing point of lead at this particular composition. So, at Y, lead starts to solidify and the excess, there will be the equilibrium between solid lead and the melt. And what if, imagine, I am removing the solid lead out then obviously more lead because equilibrium will shift towards solid phase and so more lead will be solidified. Again some amount of lead is solidified and I am removing this again. So again from the melt at the point Y again some amount of lead solidified. So in this way I can remove all this lead as a solid out of the melt. And such a idea was used in the Pattinson's process of desilverization of lead. Desilverization means removal of silver from lead and this is applied in metallurgy when you have got lead and silver are to be separated. The ore for lead is present always in a mixture with silver. So if you want to remove lead out of silver we are applying this idea behind this Pattinson's process that is the mixture is the melt of lead and silver, the melt of this particular ore is being cooled down and at certain temperature when it reaches the freezing point of lead at that particular composition, the lead start to solidify and that is being removed out and then again due to this equilibrium is shifting towards this, this side, more lead will be solidifying and this will be separated out and in this way you can desilverize lead. So this is an important application of phase equilibrium or the idea of phase equilibrium for the metallurgical processes. Okay, with that now we move on to congruent melting system that is two components, the two components A and B react to form a new component that is a compound and, and this compound will melt when it melts it keeps the same composition as in the solid phase. And the corresponding melting point is called congruent melting point. <coughs> Let's see an example of a zinc magnesium system. Here we start with or at the origin of the graph you have got 100% magnesium that is we are starting with pure magnesium and as we move along the graph along the x-axis you can have more and more zinc is being added and at the end of the x-axis you have got pure zinc. And we start at this 100% magnesium condition that is pure magnesium and the 650 degree is the melting point of pure magnesium and this point A marked that temperature and as we now move along the x axis along the curve AB as we are adding more and more zinc to the system you can see along AB the equilibrium between solid magnesium and the melt exists and the melt consists of magnesium and the added zinc in the liquid phase. Now at the point B the amount of zinc is sufficient enough to form a stoichiometric compound between magnesium and zinc. Di zinc of magnesium is formed, the intermetallic compound is formed and it is precipitating that is the solid compound is formed here. 
So again at the point B the amount of zinc becomes sufficient enough to form this stoichiometric compound and this compound is formed and it start to precipitate at B. And now the further the curve BC represents the melting point curve of this compound between magnesium and zinc, dizing of magnesium. And so on both sides of the curve BC, on below, below BC you have got solid compound here and above BC the solid compound that is dizing of magnesium plus the excess magnesium will be present in the liquid phase. And if you move further, the curve CD marks the melting point curve of this compound that is dizing of magnesium and below CD you have got this solid phase and above CD the compound in the liquid phase and then zinc will be present in excess because beyond CD you can see the zinc the amount of zinc is dominating. So the melt now consists of the liquid compound and the liquid zinc and below CD you have got solid compound. And further if you go further from the point D you have the zinc is dominating, the compound, the compound is completely disappearing because the amount of magnesium is not sufficient enough to form the compound. So above DE you have got the melt in which zinc and magnesium are present and below DE you have got zinc, solid zinc is present because DE marks the melting point of melting point curve of zinc. So E will be the melting point of pure zinc that is 419 degrees. So this is the congruent melting system, zinc magnesium system and this point C is the congruent melting point that is the melting point of this compound dizing of magnesium and this is characterized by 590 degree centigrade temperature and composition of 64 percentage of zinc and the rest is magnesium. And there are two eutectic points you can see here this eutectic point B and D. At B it is eutectic between solid magnesium and the compound dizing of magnesium and the point D marks eutectic between solid zinc and dizing of magnesium the compound. So these are the two eutectic points and C is the congruent melting point. And this is the rest and now we move on to incongruent or non-congruent melting system that is the two components combine chemically to form a stoichiometric compound and this compound melts with a different composition than the solid. So at the melting point the solid and liquid has two different compositions. The stoichiometry is different. And that corresponding melting point is called peritectic point. Before we called it congruent melting point here it is peritectic point. An example would be sodium sulfate water system. Here we see at 0 degree we start with pure water and as we are moving along the x axis we are adding more and more sodium sulphate that is percentage weight percentage of sodium sulphate is increasing along x axis. And yes water melts at 0 degree we know or ice melts at 0 degree. At this point we have got the start the formation of sodium sulphate decahydrate and this point this curve now indicates the melting point curve of sodium sulphate decahydrate. On one side you have got this sodium sulphate decahydrate and on the other side you have got a solution of sodium sulphate in water. And at this point this is the peritectic point where I have got my pointer now. Suddenly at this point sodium sulphate decahydrate shows a sharp increase in melting point. And on this curve you have got solid sodium sulphate and hydrate and solution on one hand and the solid solution of sodium sulphate and water on the other side. And this is how you can see the peritectic, this point is the peritectic point of sodium sulphate water system. And with that we are closing the current session and the next session we will see liquid-liquid equilibrium. Until then, thank you.